Networking is the process of sending your game data or any data over the network so other players can interact with you and your data and send their data back to you for you to interact with. So for example, what you'd need is a host, which is either going to be dedicated as in a non-playing entity or is going to be a client in this case in a game a player which is going to be sending data back to the server or the host which then sends data to all the other players so it's basically a relay of data the host relays the data however the host could also be a client so in this case we turn on a host we also become a player as a client and he's sending the data back to himself in a loop but he is connected to himself if another client connects in this case the first thing that happens is the host will send all the players positions in this case this one was moved and assigns you player 2 because player 1 is occupied and you can send your data over the network and the host sends it to all players but you can synchronize it how you want right so you can synchronize it uh, what when you when you're sending the data how freak how much data you're sending you can um, synchronize once the message is arrived at, at the host and then when the host relays the messages to all connected clients to only specific connected clients um, you can do each one at a time individually. You can really synchronize it how you want. You can have uh, your own switch statements. and So let's go over the nodes and see exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's see. Networking. Okay, so in Blender, you're going to find networking in this new little section down here which is going to be on auto by default and you can disable it and not include the classes the library files or you just enable it specifically um, it's on auto by default and you can find all these nodes these new networking nodes you can find them all in the sub menu in its own category for network with the whole list right here and in the case that I also add them as custom nodes so you can use these with older SDKs you would find them down here in the networking category you got create host node which is what we discussed you need clients and hosts um, they're pretty straightforward if you know what SSL certificates are you can just enable one use let's encrypt single command sudo apt install let's encrypt and then let's encrypt um cert only hyphen d www dot whatever your domain name is and then you just yes 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 uh, sign your certificate automatically plug in the key and you're off to go you can put this on 443 which is normally a port open f on on all devices with ssl en uh, enabled or you can really encrypt any port you want or use an unencrypted port it is going to be slower encryption is in slower it is in slower because every packet of data whether it's sensitive or not is going to be encrypted and, and decrypted on every connection um but yeah normally what you how you use your your connections for creating either a host or a client is you're going to store them into a, a property set object property you just set the object property and maybe print some like that's how creating a host works and that's actually how you configure or use these event listeners which are basically these are actually armory um events these are actually events and they're specifically actually let me see when right here 
here, yeah. So client dot on open dot on message. So this was actually like this. You can actually you can actually do whatever you would want on this event. You can also do something, but in general, you'd want to have access to the data that's coming in on a message, or you know the ID of who's sending the message, or you're gonna want to you know on open like we were saying take the ID you can <clears throat> like if you want to ban people you can just pass that ID into uh, get host IP so you pass the ID in here and then the IP comes out only hosts can use this of course they have access to the IPs uh, connecting so you can um, people can vote to ban on somebody on the ID and then you you know if certain amount of percentage of people blah 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 you can just pass you know check his IP closes connection maybe stores IP somewhere and check for IPs when they connect again on open so you know you can make a banning system like that anyway that's how listeners work it's pretty much the armory listeners with some extra access to the um to the memory items or the, the packets or yeah so and these work basically per these events right here will work per um, configuration. So these are on initialization. These these events get set. They're not on update. You can't change these dynamically. That's why there's no in socket. Uh, I initially set them up. I initially built them to do that. Uh, but um, I don't know. I think somebody said something or I don't remember what happened. But I can reintroduce that later in the future but in general you just whatever the domain is whatever IP it is this is the listener for that you know host or for that client the client is just gonna be the full URL the host will pretty much basically build the URL based off this so when you're listening on message you want you're gonna want to pass in the data and check this API field which is going to be whatever what was put when it was sent. So when somebody's sending, either it's a client that's going to send its position, its health, its um, uh, whatever it's doing. If it's shooting, if it's doing a dance, you know, you're going to put dance one, right? And then you can you can use an integer or a string to check after. You know, it doesn't matter what the data is. You you know, you can send the transforms. Uh, your vector location you can use a float integer you can send a true or false you can send a transform uh, which is the location the, the everything uh, all the scale just the rotation uh, we were I was gonna add like array JSON image um, a bunch of different things we can extend this really to whatever we want you know but that's that's how that works you send data with an API and then you parse data with an API so you know that whatever it was that was sent is going to be available on this end so whatever comes here it's going to be available here so if it's a, and you know what it's going to be based on that that's basically how that works uh, HTTP requests are self-explanatory you just make a request either post or get and you get a status code 44 505 whatever whatever you're gonna get and um 302s 101 whatever whatever the the status code is so you can do whatever you need based on whatever that code is or you can do a json request and get the response and save load whatever um, work with APIs, WordPress, Joomla, any kind of server, whatever you want. Uh, authentication, you know, those kind of things. These are pretty much self-explanatory. Open, close connection, and then host, close client connection, which is basically, you know, reopening a closed connection and closing a connection 
to null, which means it's not going to be available to reopen later. So it's completely gone. So for example, you cannot create a host on this port. If you say on click create host and you just spam the button, it's not going to crash. It's just not going to create the, the host. It's um, cause it's already, um, it's already available. So if you kill it to null somehow with another button, then yeah, you can recreate the same host on this port. So you can actually create as many hosts as you want. If I didn't say that already, you could create as many hosts on as many ports as you want. Um, but to reopen them, uh, you either close them and reopen them or you close to null and then recreate them completely. But that's basically what the purpose of these are. Um, you pass in the connections, you can update a connection um, to null, kill it completely so you can recreate it. Uh, and the host, this one's just for the host to close specifically a cl uh, client by its ID, so a connection. This is four player style static networking. I see everything's in, in, in four, so right here there's set up four players here there's uh, I don't know what this one is but it's one two three four is either saving the transforms or sending the transforms then here another set of four is relaying each of the relays uh, see this is this is as easy as it is right here when a, a message comes in a message comes in f uh, for the host and the message is a p3 player three transforms then just send all send message as a host to all send all no so not to id send it to all um that's it that's just like a relay to, to so the host that we store we store the connection host one actually in my example up here it's my host one okay but If this was host one, then it would just look like that. Get the property host one, pass it into connection, send the data to all with API player one. So a client would just, where is it? On message, if it's players one, set object property transforms. Oh, this is save. So uh, the way I did it is when the message comes in, save it. And then on update frame, I uh, set the objects rotate. That, that's how it's always um, synchronized. Otherwise, you can get, these can come in as fast as you want. Uh, I just save them and then I update them. So where's that? Up here. So update them. See, on update, just check if it's not me, if I'm not the player. Here's the time I do it tween or whatever. And then set the object transform. Something like that. Or however you want. I mean, you just get the data when you want and do what you want with it. Um, yeah. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. I hope people do some really cool stuff. As you can see, you can... Even, you know, you don't have to do a dynamic, like, per player. You can do four-player setups. You know, uh, you can do you can do a dynamic. So every connection, every time someone connects, you can spawn an object. Uh, you know, you can um, do as you want. Special thanks to Quantum Coder, to Tim Odrian, to all the, the cool cats in uh, Armory. Thanks to, uh, to everyone. Thanks, Blender. I mean, if, thanks. Thanks to the whole open source world. So um, now everyone can do some really cool stuff with these nodes, with these networking nodes. You can't wait to see what everybody makes. Hope everybody enjoyed this tutorial, introduction to networking and armory. And uh, yeah, pass it on. Contribute back, pass it on. Do something good for somebody else.